Good morning, Flasto. Pam, stitching between the lines. Uh, today is Friday, January 24th, 2020. Friday. Um, <clears throat> it's actually a kind of mild day, but nasty weather's coming this weekend. We had nasty weather last weekend. The weekends seem to be our nasty weather time. So anyway, I've been out, done all kinds of things this morning. I'm home, and I need to get a floss tube done. And um, here I am. Floss tube number 70. I didn't say that. I've been noticing on people's floss tubes that they're saying this is a video about cross stitch. Um, I'm kind of feeling like the name floss tube sort of gives that away. And if you're popping in on video 70, then maybe... Um, you already know that, so I'm not going to say that. I've been stitching as much as I can. There's been a lot of days where there's no stitching, and there's days when there's a lot of stitching, especially the iffy weather days. Where am I going to go? <clears throat> Nowhere to go. Nowhere safe to go. Uh, so anyway, <clears throat> here we are. <laughs> Let's talk about all the things. I uh, Just a quick, quick, quick recap, working my way through... Uh, last year's mania things, whips and starts, so that I have as many open possibilities this year coming up, which involves uh, like daily resisting the urge to start something new. I, it's just insane. Every day I think I want to stitch something different. I like what I'm stitching. I just like what I have yet to stitch. So I will look forward to stitch mania where I have sort of like that like privilege, that right to start whatever number of things we work out so I guess what we'll talk about are uh, the whips that were left over from stitch mania <clears throat> last month in December I finished one that was a mania start but this month my hope was to start or to finish at least one thing a month now it is only the 24th so I have some time left uh, but to date I don't have anything finished so the first thing one of the things, the first thing I picked up, I had stitched on it a little tiny bit in December. So it, I feel like as I go along, there's definitely a possibility of finishing this one, even before the month is out. It is Ink Circle's Three Little Kittens. There's just something about that that just spoke to me, I guess. So here we are. I'm stitching it one over two on I don't know what I'm going to get oh it's 32 count picture this plus I think earthen so I guess I do know picture this plus you know in the dyeing process I think it plumps up everything and one over two seems to be best but I don't like I like my colors to be bolder that the kind of bolder it gets with two threads over two but that's just too much I hear a cat I hear a cat doing something so I keep looking off so excuse me for half a second what are you guys doing? Where's Murphy? Where's Murphy? Oh, Murphy, get out of there. Sorry about that. <laughs> I, knew was, I knew somebody was chewing something. <laughs> when Cooper was kind of crouched under the pool table looking all innocent and glanced over at the spot. He's going for more. He, Murphy. He's mad. I scolded him from doing something else just a little bit ago. And so he's doing all the things he does when he's mad and feels like being bad. Anyway, okay, let's go back to the three little kittens. Just picking it up the other day, I've done pretty much, I mean, the start of the tree, the goose, the laundry basket, the laundry, this tree, the word mittens. So all of that in just a couple evenings of stitching. So I'm feeling confident See where we can get a good shot of it. That I can round out this corner, this corner, and finish going across here easily enough. And I have to do like this big Quaker piece. But honestly, I can bat. I'm gonna bat. This will be a January finish. It's cute. I've never seen anybody else do it. So there you go. Copy me or whatever and then another mania not a start uh, as you recall my mania consisted of starts and whips to total the 19 and somewhere I screwed up and I think I 
had whips and starts of 20, and then there was another whip I forgot about that was 21, so I don't know. Apparently all my list making didn't match up right. But anyway, this one I had started like with 10 stitches or something prior to Mania. And then during Mania, I had put in all the white of this house. And then I stalled out on it and hadn't touched it since. And I kind of grumbled about it in a prior video. And somebody very, very, very graciously volunteered to stitch it for me, which was so sweet, honestly. But I persevere. I always persevere. And really, it was a matter of just getting some color in there. As soon as I started putting some color in, I felt so much better about it. So I am working on it just a little bit haphazardly. Um, in my upstairs stitching chair. I don't stitch in that chair like I used to. I don't know why. I don't know. Whatever. Whatever happens in life and you sit in one place and not another and vice versa. But if my husband wants to watch something on TV in our family room, like a sporting event, so he wants the big screen TV, I'll go upstairs. Um, so I've worked on this a few times in the last month. So it's coming along. I have this pillow which actually, it's the solid blue on one side, and then it's a pretty blue plaid on the other side, like the blue plaid that is in the buttons. So I didn't change any colors. It's a little bit pastel-y, pink, blue, little girl, little boy-ish for me. But I have the pillow. Um, in my new house, I have a couch <laughs> that's uh, light blue. <clears throat> so... I'm assuming this will match. I don't know. They haven't been in the same house at the same time. So, anyway, there it is. Oh, things. So, let's hop into the, the real serious whips. The things that are really whipping along here. I, my Christmas start, I worked on for a week. But I think I showed you. I should have watched my last video. But who has time? Who has time for all that? I'm behind on regular videos. I don't have time to watch myself. Just to see what I showed you last time, I know on Christmas Heralds, by a piece of artwork by Tasha Tudor translated into cross stitch, which is my Christmas start, right? Did I say that? I know I wasn't as far along as I am now. I think I had the little boy done, his tree, and I think the basket or some amount of this done. And so now I've done the little girl and a bit of what the girl behind her is carrying. This is so stinking cute. Oh, they're Harold's. They're all named Harold. That's me. I keep calling them the Harold's. I got another Harold done. Um, I know what that means, so you don't have to tell me. You don't have to explain it. It's just, it came to me, and that's what it is. So, it's so stinking cute. It's just so cute. How can you not want to work on it? And I love it when they work plaid into the into people's clothings or the patterns of something. That's just fun. So Christmas Heralds is uh, doing well. I will work on it a little bit in February. Uh, let's see what's in this bag. Oh, we're not gonna talk about that one quite yet. Cause maybe I lied. I do kind of have a finish, but let me get there. My New Year's start, right? This was my New Year's start. <clears throat> he barely fits in that bag. Was Yes, Virginia, which is a remembering bygone stitches, which means it was a reprint after the uh, designer of bygone stitches passed away. So somebody has reprinting some of her uh, work. Um, so I don't know what the... Oh, the copyright date is 2018. So this is relatively new that it's revisiting us. I don't know when it first came out. Possibly the pattern tells me that, but I don't know. At any rate, I bought this when I went to Wisconsin and I went to um, Country Stitches, right? Is that where I went? Ooh. In Spring Green, Wisconsin. And I'm doing it with their conversion, so I can't tell you the threads. But I really made some progress. Isn't that cool? It's wrinkled. It's on the red gingham, which is what they did in their conversion, and I happen to have in my stash. I bought the flosses there. When I showed it to you last... Ah. Okay. 
excuse me for half a second while I get my display materials organized. When I showed it to you last, I had done some of the shadow of his nose, just a little bit around here. So I worked diligently on that. And I actually, last time I talked about the difficulty of the pattern, the way the pattern page breaks somewhere around here. And the two pages of the pattern, the scale isn't the same, so you can't just tape them together. <clears throat> Whoever's reprinting these, please take note. There's no gray um, area that's the, you know, repeat from the prior page. And so I made copies and I tried to tape it together and they don't line up. So you just have to very carefully make sure, you know, you look at the picture, this picture, and figure out exactly where the next page continues. So I made sure that I did that. I made sure that, yeah, here we go again, see? <gasps> Sorry. I made sure that as I was going across here that everything ended exactly in the same spot. So page break really did break evenly across my page. I started on down. He really looks great. So I will work on him a little bit in February. I may just try to finish the, the Santa parts. This is a big, big section. <laughs> a lot of stitching in there. Um, and then put it aside again. It's good to have little goals, especially when I'm trying to work on more than one thing at a time. So there's Yes, Virginia. My New Year's start. You saw my Christmas start, and there's my cats fighting over there. So you'll probably hear them. Boy, bay. I started on my birthday, I started Jack Frost Tree Farm. This is the one part. It's done, traditionally, if you do it all on one, it's done this across the top, and then a row of three, and a row of three. I decided I am going to do it on one long piece of fabric, which might prove my undoing here because it's hard to hold all this big wad of fabric. It's just big enough that it's hard to hold. So in December, I accomplished the first stretch, which is about right there. And then this month I did the hot cocoa booth so it really looks great. I will, I know, I know when it's all done, there's going to be a little bit of touching up things. Uh, there's more snowflakes in hot cocoa than there are in this stretch of it. There's a couple big ones, but there's really not little ones. There's a couple stray ones. So it's snowing harder on hot cocoa than it is on the house. So I will wait until I'm done and see what looks like might help balance it out. There is one, at least one stray snow. I think I put this one in. <clears throat> I did make some changes to hot cocoa, only the slightest changes. In hot cocoa, sorry, wrong one. Let me thumb through them. Excuse me while I organize myself. Did we talk about it? Did I show the correct one at this some point? The tree, the tree, the pine, the tree. Dear me. Here we go. All right. So sorry. Hot cocoa uh, is framed in, as is uh, the tree farm one, which I left those off. And in the framing in process, you see where the tree is cut off a little bit, which makes perfect sense when it's used this way. Doesn't make sense when it's a tree actually growing in the wild <laughs> near the tree farm. So I balanced it out, you know, matching up the branches so that I, you know, balance the tree. I balance the snow that was at the base of the tree. So that was pretty much it. Just, I was glad I caught that. Not that I wouldn't have noticed later, but it meant the true, this whole unit had to start over this way a little bit, or there wouldn't have been room to, 
you know, make these branches stick out past this, you know, they would have run into that tree. Which, yeah, it could have looked like it was behind that tree, but, you know. I kind of get all crazy here with my cross stitch and perspective and all that. So Jack Frost got his January uh, part done. I will, uh, again, try to do one more installment in February and make my way along until it's done before the year is out. Um, now, this mystery bag of things. I do not think we talked about this. I don't think, I think I didn't have this with me when I did the last um, floss tube. I mean, it was here in the house. I just didn't have it up at the table. So now here I am again sorting through a pile of patterns. What I'm working on are the Crazy Annie Stitching 2019 Country Christmas Ornament Club, which was an auto ship from Crazy Annie's. And there's all kinds of ornaments. And I am making an effort to do one a month. Um, I may actually end up with more than one a month. I'm not entirely sure. My early plans are that I'm going to take this with me on the road shortly and from there possibly finish a couple more. And I'm not doing them in any order. I'm sort of a kind of a little bit. I did do the first one. This one, which I believe is number one, bringing home the tree. There's the little button embellishments in there. I did do that one first. I'm doing it on this red fabric, I don't know what you call it, fabric flare, and I'm not entirely sure I'm in love with it, but all the pieces are cut and they're serged, they're in the bag, and probably I'll stick with it. So then I reached into my bag. I tried to pull out not a favorite piece, not a piece I was looking forward to do. I was kind of saving a favorite thing like, here's an easy one to show, hot cocoa would be a favorite. I was trying to save those for the end when I was really struggling. So I did the wreath. Here's an example of why I'm not in love with the red polka dot. Um, it, sometimes it just doesn't really uh, enhance the picture. Let me see, I'm just folding up some of the fabric so that, you know, in when it's an actual ornament, get an idea maybe of how much of it you'll see. So, anyway, that was January's. I'm uh, Like I said, I may get more than one a month done a time or two because I'm traveling. I'm accompanying my husband on a trip. Uh, we're leaving a week from tomorrow, and we'll be gone for a week. And so I'll have time while he's in meetings and whatnot. Um, to stitch and I just thought that would be the easiest thing to take what I might even do is work exclusively on uh, making borders around the pieces because you know that's the boringest part of all so there those are all my January things that was pretty darn good right January I don't know if it's usually a good stitching month I don't the cats down here do you want to come up here Murphy, do you want to come up? Come on. <gasps> Adventures of Murphy. Um, anyway, I have to show a little, I have to show this, and I have to thank, I have to thank my friend Lori. Lori Yu, who comments frequently on floss to my floss tube, I'm assuming on other people's. Uh, I've met her at a couple different cross stitch retreats and she's such a sweet friend um, and so very thoughtful and she sent me a little stitchy kindness which I'm very grateful for this was on on my wish list at one two three stitch and she's a little fabric in there this was one of the things I almost had to start one day <laughs> but, then I did, but then I didn't here comes Murphy look at that you guys, that is like, you don't get to see a lot of Murphy. He's cutting across the table to get to his spot on the back of the couch. We've um, we've seen him on the back of the couch before. Murphy. Let's see. Murph. Oh, sorry. There. That earned me some thumbs down. Hey, Murph. Say hi. He's just a very friendly, I mean, he's sweet. He's very sweet to us. He doesn't have a lot of use for anybody else, but that's cat for you. That's a typical cat. So anyway, thank you, Lori. That was very, very sweet, very kind, very generous. I appreciate it. Um, 
<clears throat> as I said in our last, my last video, we're selling our house. We've bought a house. It's an adventure. It's a wild ride. Uh, we are under contract on this house. So, <clears throat> and we closed on our new house a couple weeks ago. So we will um, get ourselves settled. We've picked some carpet that needs replaced, some carpet needs clean, some walls need painted, but not a lot. There's not a lot um, of those kinds of things we need to do, but it's nice to have the time before we leave here to get them done so when we get there, <laughs> we don't have to try to move furniture around and paint bedrooms or whatever. It's just kind of hard to light a fire under the people that, uh, not the painting we can do ourselves, but like the carpet replacing. What are you going to do? You try to do shop local. You try to, you know, they complain about, he come, when he came to measure, complained about uh, online stores that are hurting his business, blah, blah. But <clears throat> you're supposed to give us an estimate on Monday. It is not Friday. I had to call. Um, so I'm not, I'm not real happy. So anyway, that's neither here nor there. Life does go on. These are certainly worse things to worry about. But these are the things that, I'm worrying about, so anyway. I've done a little tiny bit of sewing. Well, okay, no, that's not true. A lot of years, and I did this year, I make, I follow, uh, I do, Bonnie Hunter is a quilt designer. She's a national teacher, travels the world, um, travels the country regularly, like back and forth across the country teaching classes. I went to see her and took a class from her last summer. And she does a mystery quilt. It thanks starts releasing the clues at Thanksgiving, and it goes. This year it was nine parts, so it was after New Year's when the final installment came out. So every week you do the next step. So that's the sewing I've been doing, uh, and what you end up with in the end is a quilt that's fairly complicated. The blocks have sixty four pieces in them, so there's a lot going on. So that's where I've been spending my sewing time. But one day. I must have been done with the next installment and lots of time left still in the week before the next clue. So I pulled out I, this book, um, Art to Heart. There's there's some cross-stitch designs, too, that are from this, I don't know, Nancy Halverson is the designer. and But I love her Art to Heart quilt books. So I had joined a monthly club last year to receive these and in individually not as a whole big quilt like here's a page they're done individually so that's what I have worked I've made three of them maybe uh, <clears throat> so I pulled out the little kit and I did the February one I have not sewn down the binding this is good um work when I'm away from where I can do cross stitch like where I don't have a magnifier so that's just waiting to be tacked down so it kind of looks a little funny uh, so I do my binding I hand stitch my binding back around so there's no stitching that shows or anything on the front so it's really cute it's a cute one I don't have a lot of Valentine's Day decorations and then I have been puttering along since last fall with this little guy which is a cutest little kit not a kit sorry cutest little pattern it uses a charm pack which is a little five inch um cuts of fabric <clears throat> so i did it when i went to a quilt getaway thing last fall and i made the blocks and i finally put them together and ran it under through the long arm and got it all quilted it's so cute, isn't it? There's some complexity in these blocks, though. Those are tiny. I mean, the, the, those are little. Little. Like this whole thing. What is that? Five, five inches? Five or six inches. Something, something went awry somewhere. Or I didn't really care for a block, so I kind of whipped this one up on my own. <clears throat> I can't remember what the problem was. I think it was one where you simply just fussy cut the fabric like this one is but I honestly don't know I don't remember without comparing it to the pattern so this is another one that I haven't 
tack down the binding. Again, a good pro I love fabric with writing on it, especially white fabric with writing. Uh, so I like to use that as wherever I can, when I can. So there's that little beauty. So I have two things to tack down the bindings on, and um, I'm at the point where I'm wrapping up anything I'm going to be working on in my sewing room. My long arm has been dismantled, and I am slowly packing up my fabric and stuff and moving it. I have a... <clears throat> I have to create my sewing space and there's a nice double closet that I can use to put fabric away in so I have been taking fabric over I took some of my little shelf units over and so pretty soon I won't have anything here to sew except for little things like little kits like this <sighs> I can't I can't let my sewing machine go but I might let the table go because it's super heavy so if we have somebody who can help move it then We'll take advantage of that. <clears throat> so anyway, there we go. Friday, a January Friday. Um, it's a bright, sunny day, except I'm in the basement, so you can't see that. No benefit. Uh, heading out on an airplane a week from tomorrow. Destination's unknown. Unannounced. I mean, I know where I'm going. To accompany my husband. And um, when we get back, it'll be full steam ahead on the... Uh, on the packing, on the packing, so it's exciting. Um, but there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of things happening. So I just try to do what I can do. So hope everybody has a good weekend. Um, what is tomorrow's like? Support your local quilt store day. I know there's a lot of quilters that also cross stitch. So um, <clears throat> I did today. <laughs> I, was, I was out doing some things, and there's a little, little quilt store in the area um I have mentioned more than once that I live where there's a lot of Mennonites and um there's a couple of different Mennonite quilt stores and they're very small very small stores but their their fabric is priced reasonably and there's enough variety that if you run in there thinking you're going to find a pe uh, you know particular fabric to go with something else or whatever you'll find something but at a recent quilt guild I won a gift certificate to the shop so I thought what the heck let me buy some more fabric to pack up haul out of here haul into the new house find a spot for I don't know I figure that was I did my part in support supporting a local quilt store so there you go so anyway happy January bye